there are seven powerful reasons why Africa must unite. In fact, there are uncountable reasons why Africa must unite. But not one reason why Africa should not unite. African unity is the bailout fund from poverty in Africa. The key to the end of the rape of the continent of Africa and her holy people. Unity is the most powerful force that can ever exist. It is the coming together of many forces to form one force more powerful than any of the forces that came together. Nothing great can be built in this unity. Nothing meaningful can be achieved without unity. Whatever cannot be achieved in unity cannot be attempted in this unity. This is a message to Africa. The weaker a people are, the more unity they need. Africans need unity more than every other people on earth because we need more progress than any people on earth. Therefore, Africa must unite. First, Africa must unite to have peace. There are wars going on all around Africa. Many African states are in some form of conflict or the other. There are inter-ethnic crises and tribal wars. There are wars of internal dominations going on in Africa. Every day, we hear of Fulani Hesman killings in Nigeria. Thousands are dying. African people are in pains. The Boko Haram and Al Shabaab wars are taking lives and property every day. The conflicts in Mali, Central African Republic, DR Congo must be addressed and brought to an end. The war in Cameroon is still ongoing. Africans in Cameroon are dying every day because of colonial legacies. The people in Cameroon and Africans are not Cameroonians. We must understand it is our own flesh and blood perishing. Millions of Africans are being entirely displaced. According to the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center, an estimated 2.7 million people were newly displaced in Africa during the first six months of 2017. An equivalent of 15,000 people forced from their homes daily. Roughly three quarters of those were allegedly due to conflict and violence. Another report has it that currently about 39.1 million people are being entirely, are entirely displaced. That is according to the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Shall we allow the wars to continue? Shall we continue in negative peace? Shall we allow religion, ethnicism and nepotism from allowing peace to reign in Africa? Our answer is no. Only through unity shall we end the violence meted against our people. Only through unity shall we cause justice, peace and tranquility to reign. All the conflicts in Africa should be addressed with full authority and unity from the African Union and all organizations of African unity. The full and the headsmen killing in Nigeria must be probed and justice must be done. The war in Cameroon, Somalia must be brought to an end. The anti-African war in South Africa must come to an end. Let there be peace in Africa and only in that peace shall we be able to rebuild Africa. Two, we must unite to end hunger and starvation. According to statistics from global authorities, about 430 million out of 1.3 billion Africans are living in extreme poverty, that is, they have nothing to eat. Even those who are not included in that list are still not well fed. We are practically just existing. We are not enjoying the life God gave to us, like those in Europe or America are doing, which is why life expectancy ratio in Africa is about 2018, in 2018 was 61 years for males and 64 years for females while the average life expectancy in Western Europe was 79 years for males and 84 years for females in 2018. Millions of African youths are dying in the desert and waters to leave Africa. The risks are many. Colonization is still robbing Africans of their wealth. Wars in Africa, bad rulers, tribalism putting incompetent people in power, weak currencies in Africa that can hardly buy anything in the market, whereas foreign currencies serve the citizens of the countries and entice African youth to those greener pastures. We must come together and set the standard for African leadership. Allowing people into power based on tribes is suicide against African people. We must pass strong continental laws against tribalism and nepotism. Singapore, a multi-ethnic nation, promotes only based on merit. So should we in Africa. 
we must end the wars in Africa by addressing the root causes of the wars and using the United Army of Africa, which has to be formed, to deal with those whose only interest is war. We must be tough on corruption. We must make the system very accountable and transparent, thereby making it hard for even the most heartless thieves to steal in office and also dealing basically with those caught in acts of corruption. Next, we must adopt a single currency in Africa. With a single currency in Africa, we'll be richer than we how we are today because our trade will be done using our own currency rather than the dollar or franc or the colonial cipher. This will make the African currency to keep appreciating every day like the dollar has been. Finally, Africa must have an industrialization policy. We must stop exporting raw materials. We must become the industrial capital of the world and start exporting only finished goods and be selling them in the African currency. With these policies, hunger will drop near to zero in Africa. 3. Africans must unite in the colonization of Africa. Since 525 BC, when Kemet, that is Egypt, fell to the Persians, Africa has been under colonization fully or partially, and the only way out of this 2544 years of bondage is through African unity guided by leadership with a vision. So long as Africa remains divided, we remain colonized. Every African state was granted and created by the colonizers and they got their independence with very strong conditions to remain indirect colonies. Therefore, no African state is free. And any African state that attempts to raise her head gets leveled down. Example, Ghana under Nkrumah, Libya under Gaddafi, Burkina Faso under Thomas Sankara, all were brought down because of their desire to be free from colonial rule. The desires of the resources of Africa are today under the control of multinationals, which are all foreign controlled and foreign owned. We need to have control over our own resources. Analysis by a coalition of UK and African equality and development campaigners, including Global Justice Now, claims the rest of the world is profiting more than most African citizens from the continent's wealth. It said African countries received $162 billion in 2015, mainly in loans aid and personal remittances but in the same year 203 billion dollars was taken from the continent either directly through multinationals perpetrating profits and illegally moving money into tax havens or by costs imposed by the rest of the world through climate change adaptation and mitigation that's from the guardian the resources in america are controlled by americans the resources in europe are not controlled by asians the wealth of Africa should empower the people of Africa. This can only happen through the united efforts of Africans, which will require us to throw away every colonial influence over us. We must reject the colonial languages and choose one African language. We must remove the colonial countries in Africa and form the United States of Africa. Millions of Africans are tired of the colonial countries given to us by the colonizers, hence agitating for true African states within the United States of Africa, rather than the colonial oppressive states in the divided Africa. A United Africa will get rid of the colonial boundaries and make Africa a boundless, prosperous continent. Our unity will solve the problems of internal wars, wars over boundaries, wars over independence and resource control. They shall be solved because we shall get together and solve them. We shall remove the colonial influences which are top of the reasons such conflicts are going on. Please, we must unite now to stop the negative values from the East and the West. The radical infiltration of corrupt values from the West and the East must be stopped before we find ourselves totally degraded. There are African norms and values which are excellent and which we shall never allow to be tampered with. We Africans have a culture of community, a culture of cooperation to raise a child and help each other rise. But we have long dropped them for a lesser culture of individualism because of colonization. We only knew of marriage between a man and a woman alone. But now we see our fellow Africans coming out of the closet in quotes to marry same sex just because the colonizers live that way. Also, we are now battling with the culture of terrorism, which is not African. We must unite and push them back to their senders. We are battling with a culture of indecency and nakedness in the midst of seas of clothes available for all who care to dress up. We must unanimously reject that and bring back decency. We must unite and rebuild our positive cultures and throw back to the West and the Middle East the cultures they bring to us which are inimical to our development as a people. 5. We must unite Africa now to begin rebuilding Africa together. 
The first African communication satellite was gotten because we bought it together with the strong help of Muammar Gaddafi, the Great. Africa was paying $400 million annually to Europe for communication satellites, but now we have ours. We must unite continentally. We must unite and connect the entire Africa by roads and by continental speed train system for easy movement of people, goods and services across Africa, from Cairo to Cape Town, roundabout that connect all Africa. We must unite and build a power station that can generate power for all of Africa. Currently, OAF is working on the African Continental Power Project, ACPP, with a scientist that has the technology that can power the entire Africa for five years for each lightning strike. We must unite and make sure this lightning power station is built, no matter the cost. When it succeeds, every African will enjoy 24 hour power supply forever. It can only be built continentally through African unity. That is why Africa has no choice but the beautiful choice of uniting. 6. We must unite now to be strong. There is a popular quote that says that even the weak become strong when they unite. It divided Africa is a powerless Africa in need of aid and power change. It is so because division dilutes power, but unity brings powers together. By bringing our citizens together to form a population of 1.3 billion people at home and hundreds of millions abroad, the third most populous country in the world and the largest country in the world will make us a very strong market and bargaining power. By uniting our economies, by having one language which will be spoken, the most spoken language in the world, by uniting our armies to form the largest and the strongest in the world, the United Africa will be the largest country in the world, larger than Russia, larger than US, India, Mexico, China and much of Europe put together. The United States of Africa will be powerful from beginning. Every nation in the world will respect us and want to be our allies. And no one will take us for granted anymore. Africa will no longer be the weak Africa of today if we unite. Finally, we must unite to be self-sustaining rather than being dependent. Africa today is dependent on AIDS at all levels for virtually all sectors. The AU building in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, which is currently the headquarters of we the African people, was built by the Chinese free of charge in quotes and allegedly spied for five years by the same Chinese. The same Chinese have pledged to build a $32 million headquarters for ECOWAS and Abuja. The Washington-based Center for Global Development and Aid Data has revealed research findings that suggest China is financing 1,673 development projects worth $75 billion in 50 African countries. So the questions are, after 60 years of independence, why couldn't Africans build a headquarters for themselves? Does it mean that ECOWAS cannot be the headquarters? Does it mean that Africans cannot be sufficient enough without AIDS? We call them free AIDS, in quote, free AIDS, in quote, but we are paying for them by losing our sovereignty bit by bit, parcel after parcel. Former US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson had this to say. Chinese investment does have the potential to address Africa's infrastructure gap, but its approach has led to mountain debt and few, if any, jobs in most countries. A United States lawmaker, Rep. Chris Smith, chairman of the Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Africa, said in a recent opinion article that China has also used this foreign aid as a bargaining chip in corrupt African countries with plenty of natural resources for them to exploit. Aid Data, a research laboratory at the College of William and Mary, argued in written testimony submitted to my committee that China effectively, effectively buys the votes of African governments at the United Nations. They concluded that if African countries voted with China at the UN an extra 10% of the time, they would receive an 86% bump in assistance, the lawmaker said. He who feeds you controls you, says Tomo Sankara. We must become self-reliant, but only in African unity can that be sustained because colonization does not want Africa to rise. But only the force of unity, only the power of African unity can destroy the chains of colonization and allow Africa to rise to the top again. Therefore, Africa must unite.